Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the Eventide role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this post-apocalypse survival horror experience that you can enjoy as a traditional role-playing game or playing it as a solo or co-op game, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the enemies. And don't worry, I am going to avoid spoilers, I will only give you a few details concerning these beasts of the wastelands, because that way you can still enjoy surprises, the unknown elements, the abilities that the enemies can use to attack you as you are playing it solo or co-op. So, the wildlands of the new world are a dangerous and deadly place, even for the most experienced and well-prepared survivor. Creatures have evolved and mutated to survive the harsh environment and constant threat from others. It is because of this that they aren't going to go down without a fight. Survival is key above all else, no matter the cost, and almost every fight is a fight to the death. There are innumerable creatures, both humanoid and not, which could cause a lot of trouble for the characters in Eventide. Each enemy is presented through a stat block. This is a list of the key characteristics and attributes of the enemy. The equipment that the characters have at their disposal, as well as the size of the group, makes this challenge rating a rough estimation. There's also combat skill. This is the enemy's skill level in terms of landing successful attacks. This is the number the players need to roll against to dodge attacks. Then we have health points. This is the amount of damage the enemy can take before succumbing to its injuries and dying. There's also defense. This is the number of successes required to successfully attack an enemy. This represents the enemy's maneuverability to evade attacks. Then we have attacks. These are the natural and unnatural weapons available to the enemy, as well as how much damage they do. Some of these attacks cause a condition. Conditions are usually triggered by a successful attack unless stated otherwise. If an enemy has multiple attacks available, the Game Master decides which attack is used each turn. Then we have Description. Each enemy has a description section in their stat block, which covers their appearance, movements, tactics, and other information that the Game Master may find useful in setting the scene for the players. It will also contain information that the Game Master can use to help with role-playing the enemy. Now, let's talk about some of these enemies. We have baboons. They are wild and dangerous primates, known for traveling in large troops. They are often underestimated by wanderers, but this is a mistake. A group of baboons can easily overwhelm an adventurer who is unprepared. We also have behemoths. Behemoths are giant beasts that wander the wildlands. From a distance, they appear human, but upon closer inspection, their massive hulking frames and engorged musculature very quickly set them apart. Often reaching heights of up to 3 meters, they are truly terrifying and deadly. Then we have blood bears. Blood bears are an evolved species of hyper-aggressive and dangerous bears. They stand 3 meters tall and wield massive claws, which can be devastating to an unprotected wanderer. We also have bloaters. The first thing most wanderers might notice about bloaters is the stench of infection and decay. They are the tragic result of some sort of horrible chemical attack, which left these former humans as rotting and swollen husks. They are weak and slow, but their speed is poisonous and will ensure a slow and painful death unless quickly treated. We also have cursed crabs. They live and breathe along the coastline. Through evolution, they have somehow managed to become immune to the effects of the waters of oblivion, making their shells a rare and valuable commodity. They are about 30 centimeters in size, with enlarged pincers that are razor sharp. Then we have dune rats. They are deformed rodents that inhabit many settlements across the island. They are filthy and feral, and are known to live and move in large swarming groups. We also have drones. These are flying attack robots, originally built by a tribe called the Gearheads. A glitch in their electronics caused a handful of these formidable mechanized killing machines to fly randomly across the island, attacking anything and everything that moves. Then we have feral wanderers. They are wild inhabitants of the new world. They often travel and live together in packs, having discarded any semblance of order and civility. 
Feral wanderers communicate in a series of grunts and barks, and their technology is extremely rudimentary. They are dangerous and unpredictable, often attacking completely unprovoked. We also have ghouls. They are emaciated, pale, and hunting. Unexplainable creatures that wander the wasteland. They are humanoid in stature. They are nocturnal hunters. Their strike is a fairly unremarkable attack, but they have been known to release a mist of noxious bile from glands under their tongues, which can incapacitate their targets, allowing them to prey on their victims slowly and painfully. We also have hunters. They are dangerous wanderers of the wilds, highly skilled at camouflage and striking their targets from a distance. Their expertise with a bow makes them the closest thing the wasteland has to a sniper, and often they will take out their targets before they can even get close enough to retaliate. And these are just some of the many enemies, or perhaps potential prey or allies depending on the situation. All of them have different special attacks. They are somewhat generic or universal. They feel at times like templates, and this is perfect for this role-playing game. Because you never know when you need to reskin a set of stats to represent a new creature or new enemy encounter depending on your campaign. You even have tips on how to do that here. The enemy system in Eventide is very clean and simple, and as such it is extremely straightforward for game masters of all experience levels to modify enemies to fit into the setting of their particular game. A very simple way to adjust on the fly would be to reskin these enemies. This means that the game master takes the stats of a similar antagonist from the list presented but changes their name and description. And of course, their background, if needed. We also have information on creating new enemies, which is very simple. A game master may find that there are no enemies presented in this book that meet the exact criteria they are looking for. In such case, creating a new enemy from scratch may be the best option. Generating a stat block for enemies is very easy. You only need to name the enemy, assign a level, determine the health pool of the enemy, assign combat, list attacks, and describe the enemy, of course. So you could create enemies that poison the characters, or incapacitate them, or daze them, or blind them, etc. And this concludes this part of the review. As you can see, this is a great beast theory. You have the selection of all sorts of beasts and humanoids to attack or interact with the group of adventurers depending on the situation, but you also have information on how to create new enemies or reskin these stated creatures. And I went through the setting information and compared it to the list of enemies or non-player characters included in this beast theory, and I think all of the bases are covered, maybe in a few very specific scenarios then you will have to reskin or create new enemies. But for most of the time, you're going to be using these enemies straight from the list from the beast theory, and that's great. Well, thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, Thank you, and see you later.